and that was done very badly. Sorry, I do not have my uh, uh, piano really tuned up here for the show, but let's just go ahead and start the show. Joining us this week, we have Mark Schult, Galaga world record holder of the single ship track for Arcade. And of course, as always, my uh, comrade and culprit, John Klinkle. How's everybody hey, doing, hey. guys? Good. How are you doing? Doing excellent. Hello. Doing excellently. So, Mark, again, uh, I believe a week or two ago, actually it was two weeks ago, because last week I couldn't do it because my power got knocked out, because we had uh, tornadoes and storms and all that good stuff happening and all that. But I uh, wanted to let you know that uh, congratulations on Thank your you. single ship record. And so uh, that's absolutely awesome. And uh, Joe Piscitelli, he uh, just chimed in, and I see that he just said hello. Joe Piscitelli, hello. we actually had him on uh, not too long ago and all that. So that's absolutely awesome. And right now we're basically just kind of sticking to an interactive uh, podcast format. So we're just going to go right straight to the chat. We've got Joe Piscitelli with us here, and Mark will read off any questions that are asked of you and all that. So uh, Cool. Sounds good. Anyway, so let's hear, you know, single ship record. Was it 1.5 yeah. million, correct? Uh, so my, the record I, I, that I submitted was 1.2, and since then what? I've gotten 1.5. So I, I've upped it to 1.5. haven't submitted that, but uh, 1.5 is where I'm at right now, a single ship. Yep. Okay, excellent. So the thing is, is now this is something that I know. The one person that made me a, a better Galaga player right off the bat was this guy that we have joining us, Mark Schultz. <laughs> and then, no, seriously, seriously, because if you remember, uh, whenever you first met me in Indianapolis, uh, the deal is, is that I was actually um, uh, starting in the middle, which uh, Jordan Dorrington, both Jordan Dorrington and uh, Mike Thompson actually play in the middle and all that. Yep. However, uh, you uh, made the suggestion that I cheat to the left using the uh, I and the second H of high as uh, basically my point of reference for starting out the game and all that. So mm -hmm. appreciate sure. that because I've actually, uh, granted, I've never had a Galaga record at all, never and all that, so I probably never will. Uh, but never, but never say never. No, I I can't I can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. No, no, no. Maybe on Mame or something like that. But even then, like, I don't know. It's like I get frustrated playing Galaga anymore. So, but uh, no, man. Um, anyways, uh, absolutely excellent what you did. So the thing is, is this one thing that I know: your unorthodox ship <laughs> recaptured method. Yeah, that most certainly had to have a uh, effect on your gameplay or, you know, in allowing it kind of giving you like that special ability to get you over that hump and get a record. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think the, the so, and the method that you're talking about is how I, when I want to get recaptured, I just don't shoot. And I've always told John, I mean, the first time I met John, we start, I showed him how I was, how I was doing this. And then like, he, I, I got him to start doing it. And I was the whole time I was like, don't shoot, just don't shoot and just wait for him to come down, be patient with it. And I kind of taught my, when I was, when I start, when I first started playing Galaga on the Xbox, um, I would come home after work and I would I would play for a while and I would actually practice that. Like that's how I got good at doing that, by like saying, okay, I'm just gonna be patient and try trying to find a bet the best way to get recaptured. And what I did, I just started doing that over and over again, trying to find you know, you know, something that made sense to get captured, and that always made sense to me to do that. So um, when I was even younger than that, I just you know, I, I do what everybody else did was try to shoot and get recaptured. But um, I, by me, like, practicing on the Xbox and playing over and over and over again, like, okay, and playing on MAME, I'm like, okay, this, this gives me some, you know, some way to practice and doing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got good at doing that. I, I would agree with you. Like, I would say, um, you know, over in the over in Gallagher group where they had the uh, the challenge, I thought, well, the way I do, I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on getting more than like, if, I was like, okay, if I get like 200,000 points, that'll be, that'd be awesome. That'd be yep. great. Right. And I sat there and played and I got like five. And then like the first time I did it, I got like 300, I think, or something like that. I'm like, well, I got it. There's something to this maybe. So, I mean, yeah, I think, I think with, you know, the way I recapture like that, I think that's definitely a main, uh, that's, that's helped me out a lot. So. Yeah, no, no, it's excellent. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, in looking that, I mean, just looking at what you did and all that stuff, because 
quite honestly, like whenever you got it, you know, cause, uh, you know, I, I think like for my, I, th- I think the thing is on Galaga, it's safe to say this, that the only cap that exists is the one that you put on yourself. Like me, I'm capped out at 3.2. And the reason why is because I don't want to play anymore. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, and it's because of the fact that there's so many Jason Strawn's on, you know, Jason Strawn. I will say that, you know, Jason Strawn, Taylor Morgan and all this stuff, like the new guys that are coming up and hell you, you know, much better, you know, much better and all that, you know, than, than, than me and all this stuff. And part of the reason is, is just, uh, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, let me put it this way. It's the stress. It, you know what I'm talking about? The, the stress that you put on yourself and, and you know what I'm talking about, John, yeah. you've got this, you've had, I've seen you have the stress, Mark. I know you've had the stress. Oh, yeah. I have the stress. And I mean, you know, you, you know, it's just, it's like, you know, you put it on yourself. Like whenever you start getting good at a game, it's like, okay, could I do something with this? You know, it's not like like uh, my uh, world record in uh, pole position on main. Like that one, I just happened to figure out another way to play, and I got that very, very leisurely. You know, I'm still waiting for someone to break that. But you're talking about with Arcade, with Galaga, I mean, it's a matter of, you know, you only get 18 lives from Marathon. You only get 18 lives from Marathon. Yep. And the thing is, is that, let me ask you something. You know, you've got that stress that you put on you because you know you're a good player. And the thing is, is that then you have a roll of bad luck or run of bad luck and you lose, you drop like five ships and you've done it. I've done it. Everybody's done it to where, sure, you know, that just kills your concentration and then you're just done. You just give up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Cause I think, cause I think we all have high expectations. I think that's, that's where it comes from is we all have high expectations for us, for ourselves. And when we don't meet those expectations, that's when you start making mistakes. That's when you start, you start playing, you don't play yeah. well for long stretches. So like everybody, even, even like Armando, like, and uh, Jordan and all of us, I mean, we all, we're all great players. And we've all played the game very, very well. And we all have this. And sometimes having a breakthrough is breaking through those expectations. And, and sometimes you have your best game when you're just sitting there, you're just relaxed. You, you just sit yeah. down oh, and yeah. you walk up. Even Phil, even Phil day has told me, it's like, you know, you know, you, you know, when I, when I was trying to, you know, qualify for score wars, I mean, I have, I had a, I had a breakdown during scores. I'm like, God, I cannot, I cannot do better than this score I'm trying to go after. I really want to be a part of it. And like, and I know, and I know I can play so much better. So it's just, it's, it's one of those things where you're going to, you're going to have your best game when you can just sit down, relax and just say, look, whatever happens in the game happens. And it's hard to, I mean, you can say that to yourself, but you have to believe it. You have to believe that you're, that you can, that you're just going to sit down, relax. And if you lose a few ships, who cares, right? I mean, like right. in the like with Marathon, you have 18 ships. I mean, that's a long game. I mean, you, you, if you if you lose a ship, you know, there's nothing to stress. I mean, when I, I, I had 6.5 on Marathon a couple of days ago, and I lost my first ship at like 200,000. And, I mean, it's a long game. You just you have to put that stuff behind you and just keep going. So. No, I, I totally hear you, man. I mean, you know, it's – Cause I, cause I mean, that's just the thing is that just that, that stress. Yeah. And I don't, oh yeah. Like, and, and, and John kind of, and, and like score wars in Santa, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, it was tournament time. And all of us had, we had, we all had high expectations. We all wanted to win, go home with some money, you know? And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, st- we all- the, the, the stress there was, <laughs> it was unbelievable. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it unless you were there. I mean, like the first few days we were there, just to just to give you an idea of what it was like. The first few days we were there, it was like, hey, we're having a great time. We're all playing marathon. We're all hanging out. We're all, you know, having dinner with each other, having breakfast with each other. We're all having a great time with everybody at Meow Wolf. I mean, we had a we had a blast. And then the tournament day came, and it just like I just I just remember it was like, I mean, it was like a everything got serious very 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 quickly because we all knew. Okay, today's the day we're gonna we're gonna you know try to win this thing you know and uh, all 10 of us i think all 10 of us felt the stress of that it, it, i've never experienced anything like that before of being in that type of environment where you know someone's gonna someone's gonna go home with some money and try to do really well so yeah i know i know what you're talking about with stress and i mean that, that was extreme stress but even personal stress yeah i mean 
you just have to try to the best thing I get I get the I, advice I would give anybody is just to try to just believe in yourself you know put those try to try to put that in the back seat and um, just play just sit down in front of the machine and just play and whatever happens you, you're, you're, you're gonna play again tomorrow you know I mean yeah, it yeah matter, so. absolutely so. so let's uh let's see your cabinet if you could show us that man yeah so I'll you show said you're in your office I'll, I'll show you yeah I'll show you a couple let's see so let's see if I can turn the screen here uh flip it here so there's my mappy yes there's mappy obviously there's all there's my new york jet stuff and all the other stuff on the wall but uh there's my uh mappy i would have thought you were a bears fan or something nah i mean, I've always, i love the jets jets are my team yeah always uh, been that way okay all right yeah and then there's my wizard of war and then i can show you let me turn this camera around so see anything better there is my Galaga cab. There's my setup. Nothing major. John, I still have my. Uh, I found my badge the other day, from the uh, that we wore. We, we all had these little badges that we wore where we were playing. So I have that. Um, let's see, I'll, my 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 friend Chris Oliver. He has his own business. He made these for me, that are on my wall. There's my little so I went Galaga light box. And this thing I found, I found online this big po this big thing that's on my wall. I found that um, my friend, uh, so my wife Chrissy found. Uh, there's this artist. He did a bunch of like old school gaming like like art like paint. And so this is like a gra like a of a, this is some kind of like artwork that he did. And this is the Galaga one he did. He did one for Donkey Kong, for Pong, for Centipede. So uh, this is the one I got. The detail on this is just amazing. I love looking at it. Um, there's some of my other Galaga gear, my Score Wars uh, poster. With everybody's autograph. Everybody's autograph on there. John's on there. Uh, I'm on there. Andrew Lee Law. Everybody's on there. Mm -hmm. And then there's my uh, Walter Day uh, trading card that I that was uh, I was awarded um, when I came home. So I got quite the setup in here, man. It's been it's kind of cool to have uh, to come in here and see all this stuff. So. So what's next then? You know, cause I was, uh, we were, uh, John, uh, Mark and I were talking, uh, before you, uh, got on here. So it begs the question for Mark, what's next for Mark Schultz? You've got, you know, your single ship, uh, world record. Is it, uh, I mean, the thing is, is that as Jordan and as Armando, uh, have proven and all that, uh, and Mike Thompson too, you know, no record is untouchable. So, you know, with the, quite honestly with where it is with Jordan Dorrington with both the tournament and with the tournament, I will say that it's getting to the point of, uh, I honestly think eventually there will be a human cap on the tournament, meaning like you can only play perfects for so long. And I mean, in order for Jordan, yeah. in order for Jordan to do what he did with the tournament score, uh, 7.2 million run, you know, you know, you think about that, that was, you know, a million points more, I think, than Armando's uh, first uh, uh, world record. Uh, the, the one that he uh, took from, uh, 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 I think it was around, around a million. Yeah, Andrew Laidlaw, yeah. The thing is, is that is that, you know, that's what it took is like a completely crazy, unfathomable long run. Now, with the marathon, I, would, I mean, I think honestly – with the tournament score, I think eventually it's going to get to a point where it is untouchable right now. I don't think it's at that point, uh, but I think that it will be. What do you, so, what do you think that point will be? I've got to guess. 12, 13 million, 12 to 13 million. Um, I, I, I would, I, I would go up from that. And I think, I think it's um, 20. I, 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 I'm going to say, I was going to say 15. I was going to say 15 million. I, and I, I think here's why. Yeah, I think you get five oh, ships. Ahead. So you get five. You get five ships. So someone goes on a big. If you go on a big run on your first double ship and get like you know the the way Armando, Jordan, Mike Thompson, other guys have been playing on a first double ship like that. If it, if the right game, if the if they have a, a just the right run, right, um, they could really put it away. They could they could get six million, seven million on their first double ship. That's not a. That's not unheard of for them. I mean, that sounds like a giant score, but oh, it is. <laughs> it's a giant. I mean, it's a giant score, but for them, it's it's. I mean, for them to pull that off and do it, 
on their first double ship, and then have and then have all these all these other ships left. I mean, they have four, you know, like you know, three or more ships in reserve, and just to go off like that. Um, yeah, I, I I think 15 million, I think is where you'll see it, and I and and I could see an outside chance of 20 million being done. But um, That's, no, I, I would agree. With you, but I do agree with you. We haven't scratched the surface yet. 20 um, million, yeah, no, it's there will be a cap. 20 million, yeah, if it gets to 20 million. That will probably be the cap, and that will probably I mean, because you, you're talking about. You I mean, to... honestly, if you want the real cap, the real cap is probably 25. The real cap, because that's where the fatigue sets in, and with that five ship limit, you can't fight that fatigue with that. So there, there's there, you know, you definitely. I mean, for somebody to get beyond that, they'd have to be almost superhuman. Yeah. Um, I mean, not that they aren't playing that way now, <laughs> you know, with the scores we've seen lately. <laughs> But um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see, this sounds crazy, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the current marathon record be topped by a five-man score. Because as we've all seen, what you get on your five-man has almost no bearing on, you know, on a marathon score. You can't just multiply it by right. three point whatever and say, oh, well, if you can get, you know, nine and a half million on five-man, why can't you get, you know, 30 million on marathon? Well, so far that hasn't happened. I think, um, I, I think marathon, I, that'll be the interesting. Cause I, I do agree with you, John. I am, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, you look at it, like, look at the history of, of, let's just look at the history of the tournament score. Let's just, just not even count up the marathon score at this point, because the marathon score, nobody touched it for almost 30 years until Armando broke it. Right. Until Armando said that this is done, we are going to break this. And then since then, the uh, marathon score uh, was toppled by uh, 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 Jordan, Jordan Dorrington, you know. So the thing is, is that there's, de I mean, the thing is the cap on the marathon, that's, you know, God knows how high that can get. Uh, I can tell you this much, though, that whenever... Whenever it gets above, like Mark, I like what you said, fifteen million. Because I think I, I, I'm just thinking, how do I put it this way? It'll get to a point with the tournament score where people are not going to go out and want to even do the tournament score. Meaning, like yeah. you know, say if it gets set, if it gets past that fifteen million mark, there's going to be a lot of gamers that are just going to take a look at that and say, you know what? I don't have the time or the patience or the mental fortitude. And really it does take mental fortitude to be able to do that. I mean, let me put it this way. The only way that that score would be broken if it gets past the 15 million point is if someone is casually playing like what you're saying and they have no stress and they just happen to be capturing, uh, capturing their gameplay. But even then, if they get on a good run and all that stuff, you start thinking, well, it, it, you know, am I going to break it? Am I going to break it? You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, kick in. Yeah, your nerves kick in yeah. and all that stuff because that that happened with me. Whenever uh, I've only broken three million once, I've had a lot of two point seven and two point eight million games on tournament and all that, uh, but I've only broken three million once. And what happened was is that once I got over that, it felt like a great relief off. But then you start thinking, is four possible? Because you know my goal, ultimate goal with Galaga was to get above uh, four and a half. So. I mean, do you guys think it'll be something like that? That if it gets, let me put it this way, if it gets up above 15, the person who's more than likely going to break that score, the tournament score, a 15 million point tournament score, it's going to be something that they are, ca it's going to come from casual play and they happen to be capturing. They're not going to, no one's going to set out to do that. It doesn't unless, make any sense. unless it's one of those guys that are already doing it. Yeah, I think they, they, they might set out to do it. Um, that's the other thing too, you know, I, I don't know. I, I really think because people were already saying it was too high that nobody was going to bother with it. You know, that's what some people kept pushing, say, oh, there's no point in it. Well, there is a point. If somebody wants to show that they are the best or that at least as far as the overall number one score, then they then they have to. So yeah. there's always going to be that desire. Somebody, People are competitive, some yeah. people. Some people aren't, and that's fine. But for the people that are, you know, for other people to say, oh, well, nobody's going to bother. Well, that's just not true. Somebody will bother. Somebody will. And even even when it hits that unattainable point, somebody will still bother. John McAllister might bother. And if he puts his mind to it, uh, I don't know too many game scores on any game that would be safe. 
you know, he, yeah. he can, he's, a, he's like a machine. You know, look at some of his marathon games. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, oh, speaking, though, of things, um, we have a special little surprise coming at some point. Just wanted to make mention of that, just for the people that happen to be watching that um, know it's we've got something coming. Um, Mark might not have seen this yet, so um, we've got we've got a special premiere of a short of the interview with Jordan to play. Oh, that's cool. So that's coming on here in a little bit. I look forward to watching, seeing that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I've. Oh, go ahead. Rob. I don't know if you'll be able to watch it though, Mark. Uh, are you in front of a computer right now that you? Oh, able I, to do... I can catch it later though. I mean, I'll see oh, it. Okay. okay. But I'll, I'll miss the premiere, but I'll, I'll definitely tune in and see it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, you'll be part of the premiere. Yeah, you'll be part, I'll be of, the part of the premiere. <laughs> yeah, you'll be part of the premiere. But uh, guess what? Uh, uh, you'll be able to hear it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's cool. uh, how that yeah. goes and all that stuff. But anyways, man, God, I, you know, I just I think that what you and Barra did because he, uh, you know, Barra set the uh, uh, single ship uh, record two on uh, uh, Mame and all that, and uh, which he, he got a score of uh, three million and all. And not to take, I mean, not to take anything away from you oh, or you know, you know, and and not to take anything away from Barra because the thing is, I'm no, a it's huge. I'm a Mamer. You know, I play Mame. I love Mame. Quite honestly, and in, in my honest opinion, okay. So this is the thing. You know, you started off on, I mean, you said that you played on Xbox. You were play, playing basically emulation. I would not call that MAME. I would call that whatever version of Xbox. Like, MAME to me is like something that you, uh, you, it's a software that you download or compile from source in my case. And then, you know, you know the, the multiple arcade machine emulator. So sure. do you think, just in general, is MAME the future of arcade gaming? Oh, boy. Well... That's a that's a good question. I, I have to so, think about it. So the, as far as it being the future, um, so arcades are, are making a comeback. Obviously, with the Galloping Ghost Arcade, there's an arcade in my town now in South Bend. All these all these arcades and or in the, in the Chicagoland area, in the Indianapolis area, in your area. Yeah, you know, my area. In your area where you live, and um, so maybe it's more accessible for people to play. Um, but gosh, there's nothing like that experience of going to an arcade, though. I mean, come on. I mean, but for me, for me, I, I love. I think Mame's great, but um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. That's a great question. So yeah, this, go ahead. This is my now, John. I'm gonna let you go because I have my own take. You were shaking your head. No, why? I was because in addition to what Mark just mentioned, um, that that's a that's a key point. And there's also the possibility of the manufacturers remaking these the original equipment. Um, it might not be exactly the same, but if they'll certify that the gameplay is the same, uh, I think that's a solution. And and like Mark said, you know, with these arcades booming, uh, you know, you've got Galloping Ghost. These places aren't going to just shut down. They're going to, I think, they're going to keep growing and getting bigger. And I think we're going to have more and more arcades opening up. So I, I don't I don't think I, I won't I don't think Mame is the future of arcade gaming. I don't think it's going to go away either. No, it won't, I, I think no. it's going to co. I think they're still going to coexist. I, that's what I think. Well, maybe with just but, I would I would say Mame is going to be your go-to for like your casual gamer. And your Someone computer was, people want yeah. to sit at home yeah. and play on the computer. Yeah, if they but, want to play um, around. Yeah, yeah. So you had something though, Rob? Yes, I do. Uh, let me uh, actually I had to put it up because of the fact that I'm doing a. Uh, my wife and I were actually going to be doing a teleconference because of COVID nineteen. Uh, my wife and I were going through the uh, adoption process, and we're actually switching agencies and all that. And uh, well, anyway, so let me see if I can dig it up here. So sorry for the dead air, people, but. Well, actually, I'm going to say that actually I've showed it before and I'm not oh. going to it's it's right now. I've got a bunch of junk in the way and all that. So here's the deal. Uh, my take on MAME and the future of arcade gaming and all that stuff. I mean, quite honestly, I would say as far as accessibility goes, MAME is the the way to go and it is the future. And here's something that I've known. Uh, Mark, I know, you know, you're an IT guy and all that stuff. You, uh, you know, you, you were I mean, heck, as far as I'm concerned, you 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 you're. Uh, congratulations on your new position, first and foremost. Thank you. Thank but you. Is it okay if I say where you work, or is that? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm okay. wearing where I work. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody knew that. 
<laughs> well, some no, no, I work at the University of Notre Dame, so yeah, you're okay. Fine. Yeah, so fine. to yeah. to me, you gotta understand. To me, with Mark, Mark works at the mecca of all universities. In my opinion, there is no other university as far as you know. After Notre Dame, there is no other university and all that. You know, I Mark and I were both from Indiana. He's from the northern part. I'm from the southern part on the Ohio River, and uh, the deal is is that growing up, you know. Notre Dame was like the mech of all things and all that. Well, anyways, you're an IT guy. So sure. have you messed around with uh, Raspberry Pis at all? I, you know what? I've seen the Raspberry Pi. I've, I've seen people have, you know, I've seen one in person, but I've not dabbled with it yet. Okay. Not yet. So this is my thing. I'd say in the next five to 10 years, especially as the Raspberry Pis get going and all this stuff. So get this. I actually hacked uh, my Raspberry Pi to where uh, uh, instead of like, you know, a lot of people like whenever they uh, uh, do MAME, they plug in like, like, you know me, I don't play, whenever I play MAME or play Galaga, I'm not playing on a joystick. I'm playing on a keyboard. I mean, and specifically I'm playing on a PS slash two keyboard because of the fact that there's no USB latency and all that. You know what I mean? So that's the big thing. The big crime against, or the big thing with MAME is, is the fact that the latency that happens with USB joysticks and all that. I mean, it's crazy. You're talking 30 milliseconds in some cases and all that stuff. Whereas with like a PS slash two keyboard that I've got right here, instead of having like a, a response time of 30 milli, uh, Billy Mitchell. Oh my goodness. Hey, Bill. Hello, sir. <laughs> well, that's probably junior. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, okay. It's probably junior. Well, hello, junior. Hi, junior. We don't know for sure though, but we don't know for sure, but so the deal is, is this, is that with the PS slash two, I'm able to get my uh, uh, response time from 30 milliseconds with a USB uh, uh, peripheral down to about uh, 10, millis uh, 10 milliseconds and all that. And, you know, well, someone would say, well, that's, you know, you're talking when you're talking about milliseconds, it's not that much. Uh, oh, Billy Mitchell is uh, the actual Billy Mitchell is next. So thank you very much for joining you all. We really, really appreciate it. So absolutely. Well, the deal they is might want to. They might be on to watch the um, the premiere. Ah, okay. We'll, we will have that. Uh, we will have that on here in a little bit. Here, uh, promise. So this is my deal with the Raspberry Pi future of arcade gaming for pers mostly for personal use. Obviously, you could not do this. You could not have like an uh, an arcade like Tappers in Indianapolis use one of these or anything like that. You know, because of the fact that well, you know, Mame. You know it. Well, anyways, but the thing is, though, is, is this what I have done is that I actually hacked it. The one thing about the Raspberry Pi is that you can hack it. And I actually hacked my Raspberry Pi that instead of using a USB joystick, I actually was able to take an old joystick like a Mayflash, uh, uh, Mayflash uh, arcade joystick, took it apart and actually hacked it to where I actually soldered uh, connectors to the uh, uh, GPIO pins. And whenever I did that, you know, playing Galaga, like, let me put it this way. It, uh, the buttons were crap and all this stuff. So I don't even want to talk about the buttons. And it was because of the sure. fact that I found out how in order to make that thing cheap and all that, it wasn't an arcade button. It was actually like a plastic button. Like it was mechanical, but it was pressing like a membrane board. If you know what I'm saying, right? I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. 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 So it was doing that. So the thing is, is that the connection there was not really that good. Not really that good. However, the feel of like moving left to right, because that joystick on that cheap arcade joystick was uh, kind of like, you know, basically what, you know, the arcade sticks are like on a normal game and whatnot. The feel, like it was instantaneous moving. It felt like an arcade on a Raspberry Pi, Galaga on a Raspberry Pi. So the next step is, is that, uh, you know, as I, and I'm going to wrap this up here real quick, everybody, because I know everybody wants to see the uh, premiere and we're going to get to that most definitely. But the deal is, Mark, is that whenever I was able to do that, it did, it had that feel. It really had that feel. So this is what I'm thinking. What if I just, uh, uh, you know, what if I just took like an, a cabinet, some beat up old cabinet, $50, $100 or whatever, and then rig it to run like a Raspberry Pi? Does that make any sense? Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the, my, yeah, I mean, I, I think the more, and just, just the last thing I'll say in it too is, I think the more 
like like for example these these arcade one ups that are in the stores. You know, the mm. more we see, and, that, and that's all emulated too. So the more we're seeing those, because you know, they're they're there are more in the marketplace and you keep seeing these emulation type machines in the in out there that's going to i think that's going to even more more people are going to want to turn towards raspberry pi want to turn towards mame so again it goes back to what i was saying like the casual gamer is going to see these things like hey i can i can hack my like you do like you just mentioned i can yeah. hack my raspberry pi i can play over 100 games on here and and just have fun and then the serious the the the, the, the more the more advanced player or the more serious player is going to want to like hang out at an arcade and even even still the casual people but like i could see you know um yeah i, I could see more raspberry pies and more one-ups in the future and i mean the whole thing about all that is just growing growing the community and growing people into playing these old games i think that's really really important and the more we have there's more, the more opportunities that that that's out there for people to play these things the better it is for all of us you know to keep these games alive they're so old and to keep the you know, keep growing arcades and keep growing the community. So, yep. It's all, it's so, all good stuff. So retro, we had oh uh, retro Joe. Hey mate. Um, also hey Joe. Hey Rob. Um, sorry. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> no, I was gonna say hello to retro Joe. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, he's from the UK and all that. We really really appreciate it. Arcade At, club. Go yeah, to arcade and club. then that uh, place is amazing. Rob seventeen seventeen. Thank you again for joining us. So, let's go. Oh, on. feel free to follow. Yeah, feel free to follow and all that if you haven't <laughs> followed yet. So let's go ahead. Let's get to the piece de la resistance. So hold on one second. We got this shared here. So hopefully the audio will come in. Mark, let me make sure that we get you here. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Rob1717, for joining or for following. And thank you, Billy Mitchell, for following as well. Now, you guys haven't seen this either yet, so this will be new for you as well, right? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, this will be good. So you get to see this little squib I wrote. It's not as long as the other one. I would say it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. It's not something that is just going to happen, of course. But once you acquire certain, um, certain skills in the game, that's when it can kind of be more about that one great game you have, if that makes sense. So, so you have to cross a barrier. And once you cross that barrier, that's when it's like, okay, any, any time I play after this is when a big game is going to happen. I, I didn't think it would be this big of a game that I would have. But um, I knew that once, once I started uh, getting over 14 million on Marathon, I knew that somewhere along the line uh, uh, I'm going to achieve a world record or something great at least. Now there was a point that you started kind of playing pretty much weekly uh, give or take a week here and there and it was, was that because you had finally reached a point where you knew you were getting close to the record and it was just a matter of time you thought you know what if I just do this I'm going to get it and I I'm just going to knock it out. Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. The other part is marathon takes so long that I can only really play weekly, you know, or once every Sunday. I mean, it's just, it's a long game, and um, it, it takes a toll on your body. I mean, a few days, once I start passing 14 million points, that's when the hand starts to cramp up, and that's when the fatigue sets in, and... Um, the next couple of days after that, you're just, you know, I'm just dead. You know, I don't, I don't want to go near Galaga. Uh, so I got to wait a whole week. But, yeah, you know, I did know when I was playing Galaga once a week, after after achieving that 14 million bound or uh, 14 million uh, line, once I passed that, I was like, okay, this is going to happen. It's either going to be this Sunday, this Sunday, or this Sunday. Um, and uh, sure enough, it was, it was uh, Sunday a few weeks ago. So it was fantastic. Now, you've recently created a Facebook group called Galaga Group. Yeah. 
Uh, can you tell us more about it and how it might affect or benefit the Gallagher community? Sure. Um, Gallagher Group is is unique because it's not about uh, it's not about achieving high scores there. It's about bringing together a community and uh, focusing on celebrating the game Galaga. So, I, what what I love about it is a guy will post a score of five million points, and then you get this other guy who scores uh, or who posts a score of you know a hundred thousand points, and they're both celebrated because it doesn't matter. It's not you know it's. It's fun and it can be competitive, but in this group, it's just about celebrating Galaga, you know? Um, for example, unlike other places, I don't care if you're playing on a class of 81, a dedicated board, if you're playing on your NES, you know, Galaga, and you want to submit a score, we love that, you know? Um, we're not really reviewing scores there, we're just posting them and saying, look everybody, check this out, you know, uh, let's celebrate Galaga and let's let's find out some cool things too. Galaga, I think Galaga Group is also going to be about um, finding cool things in the game. Like maybe we can come together as a group and find that golden ship. You know what I mean? Or maybe we can learn other things about the game that people don't know. That's kind of the focus on Galaga Group. Not necessarily like, oh, okay, uh, um, we're going to get your video uh, and, and analyze it and then say that you're the best or you're the fifth best in the world, you know? And there's nothing wrong with people that do that. I'm just saying that that's a whole different, that's a whole different world for us. In fact, I'll flat out say right now, if people send us a score, we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at it and go, okay, um, um, this was wrong and this was wrong. You know, you post your score and we're gonna applaud you no matter what. That's, that's kind of, the idea of the group. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. So, you know, bringing more people into the community and bringing more promoting but, it. But I do want to say this. I think what will be great is working together with Galaga Forum because what we can do then is we can we can say, hey, we got a few people here that are doing really well and uh, they either want to submit scores or, you know, they want to know where to go for the next step. So we can pass those guys over to Galaga Forum and then from there, they can get the advice and they can get their scores put up, you know? Because there could be a guy out there that can score five million points on Galaga, but the problem is, is he doesn't have a dedicated board. So he's going, man, you know, I want to submit and I'm really good, but I don't know what to do. Galaga Forum can be that 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 piece that connects together where we say, or, or where they say, hey, um, there's a dedicated board out here in this area. Or they could say, you know what? Um, we can find something for you so that you can get these scores dedicated so you can be recognized. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Now, now going back to your world records. Yeah, um, sure. Now, now initially, um, the marathon record stood for 29 years yeah. before Armando topped it. Sure. Um, the, the tournament settings record, I believe, was nine years, give or take. Sure. Now, those are fairly long-standing. You came back just over a year later took both in the in the, again as we mentioned in the very same game yeah no yeah. no less <laughs> right um that said uh do you think armando is capable of reclaiming either or both of those records uh, maybe maybe which do you think would be more likely or or neither um absolutely uh armando could take back both those records if he wanted to it's not a question of can he do it uh, I think that uh, I will be shocked if that tournament setting stands for a long time. I barely beat Armando's tournament, and he's he's a legend. So I mean, he we've seen it before where somebody takes his score and he comes back and he comes back and gets it. So you know, without a doubt, I know that he's capable of doing it, and will probably succeed in doing it. Yeah, and 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 of course, you know, we all know Armando, but. Are there any other players out there that you think are capable of that level of play, and, and who might they be? Absolutely. Mike Thompson, of course. Mike Thompson had the world record for a little bit. Armando took it back. He is fully capable of getting up to that score, too. Again, with both these guys, Mike and Armando, it's not a question of, oh, can they get there? It's when do they want to take the time to play a game and, and make that happen? And that's the truth. I mean, there's no question. In fact, I will go out and say, I, if, if Mike and Armando wanted to, they can get that marathon too. I know that's a little further out, but um, it, it might take a little bit more to get there. 
but they are fully capable of getting to that to that score you know by you know the, the way they play because they have the skills no question now, now you'd probably agree with me I'm, I'm guessing um, I think that you Armando and Mike Thompson are right now the players at that level however um, do you think that's a level attainable by other people uh, is there a way they could get there absolutely Perhaps there's others involved too. I'll give you a great example. Andrew Barra, if he ever wants to play a Galaga game, it in itself is a threat because it's like, you know, he doesn't play much Galaga anymore, but when he does, you know, he hits these huge scores and has the potential to, to go even further. Um, we have some up and coming people too uh, that, are, that are starting to show some really big scores. Uh, there's a guy named Jason who lives in Texas. He, uh, he's starting to play really well on, on uh, 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 five-man and marathon. Uh, there's actually a 14-year-old kid, his name is Philip, and he's doing like two million point scores on five-man. And this is like every other game. So these are guys that are gonna start showing up here real soon as well. And, and the other thing is, is I, wanna, I wanna point out is, I'm a great example of somebody within a year's time can catch up very quickly if they want to, if you can learn and understand the game, if you can, if you can see where your mistakes are and, and learn from that, you can, you can get there pretty quickly. It doesn't take, you know, 10 years to get up to some of these scores. So, so let's take your example of Philip, you, sure. you know, the 2 million point guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of other guys out there in that range or even a million point players or, or yeah. three even. Uh, what, what would you say they could do to get their game to that level? Well, I don't want to reveal all the secrets, but <laughs> but I will say one thing that really helped me to get to where I am is understanding where your mistakes are. Why are you dying? How, how is it that you got cornered? Um, and how do I make it so I don't get cornered? That is a big tip. That is a big thing, watching your games, understanding that, you know. And, you know, maybe some people don't want me to bring up this, this secret, but at the same time, I want people to jump up there and get big scores too, you know. I think it's great. And that said, um, let's, let's say somewhere down the line, be it Armando or Mike or, or some other random person, uh, let's say one or both of your records do go down, are you gonna, are you gonna put the time in and retake them is this going to be something that could be a a competitive back and forth could it, do you see this turning into a like a like a kind of a, a battle kind of thing so here's what i'm going to say if somebody beats those scores the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to reach out to them and congratulate them and say hey isn't it great doesn't it feel awesome to do this you know um and then i i might play games down the road but what I like about my accomplishments that I did is if I don't ever play again, I can be known for being the first to get to 20 million. You know what I mean? I can be known to be the first to get two world records in one run. These are achievements that I, I really don't have to play again if I don't want to. I can always be known as that. But at the same time, I love the game. You know, I'm always going to, you know, pick the game up here and there. Um, if somebody beat that, my scores, I might throw a game out there, but realistically, I might focus on other things as well. And I might say, you know what, congratulations, I'm happy with what I did. It's time for me to move on and do some other games and stuff. And welcome to the club of being up there, you know, as, as uh, uh, number one. Right here, this is a award that you get for getting over six million points on five lives. This Galaga Forum created this. It's called the Six Million Point Club. There's only five guys in the world that have done uh, uh, this award or received this award, if that makes sense. So uh, it's a pretty big deal. It's not something that uh, uh, a lot of people have hanging up on their wall. <laughs> and up next, this is going to be when I went to Australia and competed out there. That is my picture, my pilot picture. Um, and we had to autograph a lot of these for people and then we did uh, uh uh we got these cards too and what's really cool is this one right here is autographed by everybody but this one in the middle 
they only made 12 of these cards. And so they, they, what they wanted to do was if you got over a million points in the game while you were there, you could obtain that card. And so only a few people got these cards out there, myself included. Um, and then they had a three card set for the event. And then this is the arcade Pincadia that, that, that hosted Gala Gala. So um, they have a cool card as well. Finally, hold on one second. <laughs> Finally, when I went out to Australia, um, the Gazette did a story for me. So um, they, they, they did an amazing news article. And so I just have that frame from when I went out there and when they interviewed me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just... That's all it is, really, is the Gazette here and, and the article they did. Special shout out and thanks to my dad for putting all this together, of course. He framed all this stuff for me, so that's fantastic. I want to do a shout out, obviously, to Phil Day because he had called me to pull me into this whole community, which was fantastic. I want to do a shout out to Quarter Barrel for doing so much for me on all this. I mean, they're such great, it's such a great place, and, and uh, I absolutely love it. A shout out to the Galaga Forum. They helped get me to a certain point so I can continue moving on, which was fantastic. You know, you guys have always been great in talking to me and, and supporting me. Um, big shout out to uh, uh, Noah, who is my friend who lent me the, the arcade cabinet, which is great. Um, boy, I don't know. There's, there's a ton of people. The Twitch arcade community is is amazing a big shout out to them i mean those guys are are so much fun to hang out with on twitch talk to watch them play games they play games with me uh or watch me play i mean um it's there there that's one of the best communities out there is the twitch arcade community in my opinion so yeah oh yeah oh uh uh big shout out to uh uh australia gala gala pincadia fantastic they were uh, uh, big supporters of me when I went out there um, they're awesome of course and uh, yeah uh, I'm trying to think I don't even have a list there's a, there's so many people that help make this happen you know willing to uh, let me do what I need to do to be the best and and uh, become the world record holder So what'd you think? <laughs> so that was excellent. So a couple of things here, and then we're going to go back to the chat here and all that stuff. So, so Jordan Dorrington, if you're watching this, thank you very much for that, uh, uh, you know, having that time for the interview and all that. Joe Pisciatelli, awesome job doing the shoot. And uh, uh, kudos to your uh, editor and all this stuff, because that was put together very, very, very well and all that. John, good uh, job on uh, doing the reporting and all that. So, uh you know, and Jordan Dorrington, if you are watching this, just to let you know, you know, you're talking about Armando being uh, a legend. Dude, you're there. You're a legend as well and all that stuff, too, and all that. So uh, most definitely. I mean, you know, you know, you've got a legend here with, you know, with us right now with uh, uh, Mark Schultz and all that, you know, single ship uh, uh, Galaga world record holder and all that stuff. You know, absolutely you. amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely. We Thanks, got a man. bunch of. Got a bunch of legends here, and uh, then you got me, this <laughs> piddly guy that's got a freaking, and I am not a legend. I just happened ah, to. Rob's got some world records too. Well, one of my records was by accident, and it's kind of a joke. <laughs> I don't like talking about that world record. <laughs> they asked me. They said, "Do you really want to waste your submission points on Twin Galaxies for this? Because this, no one wants this record." So and I was like, "Yeah, sure. I just want a record." And then I got the pole position record. So on main. So, anyways. Bye. So no, uh, oh, we got Jordan Dorrington, speak of the devil here, and all that stuff. So, uh, and Jason, and Jason, you know, Jason, wow. So uh, yeah, uh, no, it was an excellent video and all that. You know, very very well put together and uh, very 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 good stuff and all that. So no, so 
Goodness, uh, Joe, excellent job. Just to let you all know that uh, Joe uh, Piscitelli, he's actually been on before. He runs his own business. Uh, he's a videographer and uh, based out of the Chicago area and all that. And uh, excellent, excellent quality. Excellent quality on that interview. Excellent quality. And uh, goodness gracious, really, really good stuff. So anyways, I guess, uh, what is it? What were the chords then, if I'm not mistaken? <laughs> Yeah, you're almost, you're almost. Almost, it was, I oh, forgot it. You have to go with the. Yeah, that, there you go. That was it. Yeah, I was hitting the wrong chord. I and like it. Stuff. There you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, guys. So, uh, we're hoping, so Joe says, uh, uh, we're hoping to have the final high-res version posted in the next day or so to all the appropriate sites. Nice. Uh, Joe, um uh, John sent me a link. Just I know that we're talking about uh, behind the scenes business here. Uh, I can work on getting that uh, posted to y the Galaga Forum uh, YouTube uh, site and all that good stuff. So we can definitely do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, goodness gracious, guys. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining and watching that and all that. And, you know, thank you, Jordan. You know, uh, the actual overall Galaga world record holder on here right now uh, uh, in our chat here. And then of course uh, uh, we had Billy Mitchell on too with his son watching. So that was absolutely awesome and all. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, I guess now, I guess it's more kind of like shoot the breeze. What do you guys want to talk about now? Well, one little quick note um, since uh, Jason's on here with us too. Uh, we have a, you know, he's got a new personal best on marathon. I I've got to watch that. Uh, who did? Who did? Jason. Jason did six point. He, I think Jason what had six point three or six point two. I don't remember which one he got. He did that today, I think. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Congratulate, yeah. Jason. Do it, it up. To, yeah, we have to do it, it. We have to hold on because of the fact that that's with the uh, arcade and all that. I'm gonna have to switch. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see here. Cotties. <laughs> Gonna have to do. Dun, 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 dun. Well, we have to do uh, <laughs> JP strings. Oh, no. We do some Iron Man. Congrats, Jason. That's a that's a big score, man. Absolutely big score. Very 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 big score. So uh, no man. Uh, uh, if this is okay, because I, I saw that Retro Joe is on, and I think uh, if this would be okay to talk about, John, you said that you had a chat with uh, Retro Joe, our uh, friend from the UK. Yeah, we had a fairly long conversation. It was really cool. Um, I'm hoping he'll be able to join us on the uh, podcast here one of these Wednesdays. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we know, uh, Retro Joe, we do apologize in the fact that we got like a time difference here for myself. I'm actually still working during this COVID crisis. I actually work in healthcare, so uh, my time's kind of uh, booked up and all that, but I am making it a point to keep myself free on Wednesdays at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time, which, if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, four or five hours behind. Uh, yes. Yeah, he's, five th he's 3 a.m. when we're 10 p.m. Okay. There yeah, you go. It's early. So our apologies on that. It's with regard to the uh, scheduling conflict, because definitely we would uh, love to chat and understand, you know, more about the arcade scene uh, as it pertains to the United Kingdom. And quite honestly, I'm interested in what it is in all of Europe, because you know I'm familiar with how big it is, uh, you know, with what Jordan experienced with Gala Gala uh, in Australia. Uh, we know how big it is in the United States, especially in the Midwest with, you know, where Mark's from. He's from Mark. Do you consider yourself a part of the region? I've been wanting to ask you about this. Ooh, part of the region. Yeah, I guess you can say like Northwest Indiana. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, that's a, that's something that I was trying to think is, is LaPorte a part of the region for all of you who don't know the region is that part of Northwestern Indiana. That's basically like kind of like Chicago land or considered to be a part of like Chicago or that everything is like, you know, around Chicago where I'm from right. in my part of the state. Hold on. I got to ask you something. I, I know how we can solve this. Are you on central time, Mark central? So I guess you can make me part of the region then I would say that that would be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would say. Asking, yeah. 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 He's part of Michigan. Michigan's on Eastern time, John. No, I know, but he's part. I mean, 
Never mind. I, was, I live on the border. Weird. Like, I, yeah, I live in a weird area. <laughs> See? So like, no, <laughs> you're not, John. You you can't say that. You know why you can't say that? Because the deal is, is this: is that I'm from southern indiana next thing you know if you're saying mark's from michigan then that means i'm from kentucky and i'm not from i was kentucky. just gonna say that yeah <laughs> don't bring that up man that's, that's a very very sore point and all that stuff the area that i'm from <laughs> well if you want to talk about like like so i so i made a trip to uh to london last year and took it and went up and experience i can tell you a little bit about my experience at arcade club um so I was at where I worked. I was I was in London last uh, August, end of August, beginning of September, for three weeks, and I took a day trip up to Arcade Club, mm-hmm. and um, literally in London. So let me give you let me backtrack a little bit. So in London, I really the the from what I've been told, like rent in London is living in London is crazy expensive. Like the pound is just yeah. it's ridiculous. Like getting anywhere. So like the only thing I found for like. Like I mean, there's there's like there was like two other arcades inside of London. The uh, the Heart of Gaming is one. I think James uh, James White has mentioned before. There's two other ones, but they're small. And then like there's some kind of like uh, Namco. I think it's I'm not sure if it's sponsored by Namco, but um, they've got like a bunch of like uh, re- ticket redemption games and stuff like that. Ugh. So yeah, so they have one of those in London. So I, I so there is a couple of small arcades, but you gotta find them. But um, I looked up Arcade Club, and I was like, and I and it was, it's up by, um, it's north of London. It's like a two hour, two hour, two and a half hour train ride. The trains go much quicker. Our, the trains in Europe are much faster, obviously much faster than what we have here. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, took a train ride up there, and then from Manchester, it's to the, the the train station is called Manchester Piccadilly, and then from there you take another train. Uh, to a, a place called, uh, I think it's called Bury. I think it's, I hope I'm saying that right. It's Bury. And Bury, there's, a, so you get off the tram, a little, there's a little train station there, and it's, it's, it's kind of like a rural area. It's, it's, I would imagine it's kind of like, uh, I, I, can't think, I can't think of a city that kind of like brings it all to it, but there's like, you know, there's, there's little shops and there's little like, it's, it, it felt really rural to me. Very, yeah. very rural. And you walk in, and he's and so Andy 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 Palmer is the owner of the arcade. They have so the way it works there is kind of like what the Galloping Ghost is. It's a you pay one price, or you, I think you, you pay per floor that you want to play on. So there's like a first floor, second floor, a third floor, and you kind of you pay. So the first floor has um, they have all classic games, and the first two floors are like all classic games. They have um, I think there is probably close to 200. Not in, Nowhere near as many as Doc's Arcade in in Brookfield, but they, I mean he's got he's got games that are from Jap- Japan, which I've never seen before. So he had a lot of Japanese imports, but that was really cool to see. the The third floor he has um, console setup. He actually has one room for VR. They have a VR setup, so if you want to do virtual reality, um, they've got console setup. And then the coolest thing is they have they have a, a really big bar. They have a bar, and they have a full and they have a menu of food. And the food I had there um, was amazing. I had these um, these pe- these uh, pizza fries or whatnot. They were absolutely amazing. Very good food. Uh, very good drinks. Um, I I probably spent around uh, five five hours there just playing playing as much as I could. I played Gal. Obviously, I played Galaga. I right. kill, I I got a kill screen on their Galaga while I was there. So I played a lot of Galaga. Um, played a lot of played some games I haven't seen before. Some Jap- Japanese games. I don't remember what they were, but they were really cool. But, when you were there, did you happen to get any sense of, um, like, the competitive scene? Like, when you kill screened it, was that something that seemed uh, common to them? Or did that seem like, oh, my gosh, wow, you know, we haven't seen this, you know? Yeah. So um, so when I first got there, I didn't I didn't know who Andy was. I was like, well, I, can I talk to the owner, you know, or somebody? And then I, that's how I got introduced to Andy. He happened to, I'm glad he was there. Um, as far as like high scores, not really. You know, usually when you go to an arcade like that, they have some kind of board put up where it shows you all the all the high scores or all the big scores that people have gotten. And I think it, over there, it felt like more casual. Like it, I saw a lot of, I did see like what I typically see at an arcade with families. You know, I saw like fathers with their kids, and I saw yeah. teenagers. Your typical type of arcade um, people there. But um, but as far as like high scoring. Um, the, Andy knew exactly what I did, and he's like, he's like, oh, that's brilliant, mate. You know, he's, <laughs> he thought it was crazy what I did. 
So uh, uh, Re Retro Joe just interjected here. He said uh, pizza nachos is what you had, I think. Yeah, they're amazing. Those are really good. I, I would kill for some of those right now. They were pizza nachos. I, I didn't know what to get. These, they, they, got a, they got a nice selection of beer, nice selection of food. And um, I was like, oh, pizza nachos sounds pretty good, right? Yep. So, uh, but they, they have a nice little setup for consoles. People that are, that are, that are playing uh, Fortnite. They had like a whole area for people to play Fortnite, for people to have drinks and to hang out. Um, very well done. I would, I would, I would. So comparing it to the United States now for arcades, um, I'd put it up there. I mean, I would obviously Doc's Arcade is the biggest in the world, but as far as like, uh, yeah, I thought it was a really, very well done arcade. It's something you would not find find around here. You know, you would have to go to um, probably out to the to the West Coast or maybe to Florida or something to find something similar with a bar. Normally, my my take on uh, barcades around here has always been, you know, the 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 drinks and the other, you know, and the the arcade machines are kind of a side attraction. Where at at arcade club, I, the feeling I got was, and the vibe that I got was like the games came first, and then everything else was okay. In addition to these all these great games that we have, we got we got a great menu, we've got a great bar, we've got we got other things that you can do in addition to that. So um, I and definitely want to go back. Uh... Yeah, that's that sounds like the ideal situation, you know, versus the other fun. way around. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm going to have to get over there and play some Fortnite. But um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, Andy's got a nice and it, and uh, I got the I, I you didn't give me a tour where, where he fixes all of his machines. So like you, they don't have, they don't have a they don't have a, a well over there they call it the lift, but they don't have an elevator um, that takes you up. You have to actually walk up these stairs. And um, so yeah, I mean. Great arcade. I would totally. I if I get, eventually when I go back to London, I, I, if I if get an opportunity to take another day trip, um, I want to. I want. I want to go back up there again and play some more games. So. So something I found interesting, John. Uh, hold on, Retro Joe sent something here. I think you can rent it out too, so you can have the whole place to yourself. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's really yeah. Awesome. Parties and stuff. I yeah. Andy's been. I saw Andy promoting that on his site. Yeah, and then. Another thing I, I forgot to mention too is so he has a location in Bury, I think there's a location in Liverpool, and then there is another. I think he's got three locations overall, which which is amazing. I have not. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see how the other locations they're set up. So um, I would. I mean, he, they they coined it as the biggest arcade in in Europe, and from what I saw, um, and you know, based on what I saw in London, where there was nothing, and then I go to this small city, and there's this nice big arcade. <laughs> Um, I think there's something to that. So, yeah. So guys, I want to let you all know this. So, uh, Leeds is meant to be, Leeds is meant to be class two. Leeds, uh, retro Joe, can you clarify? Do you mean Leeds is in the city Leeds? I think that's actually where my, uh, ancestors are from, if I'm not mistaken. Leeds is the new one. I think if I'm, I could be wrong, but Leeds is the new location. I can't remember the new location. Meant to be class two. Okay. So, uh, no, what I was going to say is, is this, as far as Europe goes, so, John, uh, uh, just, uh, well, prior to uh, uh, this uh, uh, stuff happening, Leeds in Yorkshire, yeah, the new place. Okay. Okay, so uh, prior to the COVID-19 uh, isolation and all that stuff, I was, you know, where I, when I had more time on my hands, uh, I actually joined some uh, Facebook groups. Uh, now, you all both know, uh, John, I know you know, Mark, I don't know if you know or not. Did you know that I speak French fluently? Uh, I've heard you speak a little French before, I think. I, okay. think, I, I think I've heard you speak it, yeah. Yeah. I so, do, okay. too. <laughs> Jean. Okay. Oui, tu oui. Tu t'appelles Jean Clinko, n'est-ce pas? Quelque chose comme ça. Ouais. Uh, so, me, uh, I actually uh, uh, speak French. <laughs> I speak French fluently. I received my degree in French and uh, studied up in uh, K. <laughs> Retro go goes K. So, I think you mean, I think if you mean in what, I think you would want to say qua. Q U uh, Q U O I. Well, anyways, what I was going to say is, is it something interesting that I think would be interesting to, or I've been noticing uh, in some of the uh, French gaming groups that I've actually joined. Mm. Uh, I think there's this group, I think the name of it is uh, Les Fou de Retro, which means the uh, mm -hmm. Retro Crazies. And one thing I've noticed is is that uh, community of francophones who 
looking at some of their freaking collections, like, I mean, I'm like impressed, like just, uh, with what I'm seeing. And I'm assuming that they're either from, uh, uh, they, they could only be, well, I mean, granted they could be from either Europe or they could be from Quebec, uh, where I used to live, uh, you know, or maybe even Africa or something like that. I don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming most of the people are uh, probably European Francophone, Francophone, part of the uh, European Francophonie, uh, so to speak. But the thing is, though, some of the collections that these guys got from like a retro standpoint, like uh, uh, it's looking at one picture recently. I wish I could bring it up or pull it up and all that stuff and go to the site. But like looking at like just the these guys are just people i should say not just guys but just people in general are just like in this uh french group are just crazy about their retro games you know like obviously classic nintendo stuff and then somebody had like some atari 2600 collection i'm like geez was that even yeah was that even popular you know it begs the question was that even popular over in europe i mean the 2600 you know i mean i know there were some systems that uh and some games that were uh uh, exclusive to Europe that you couldn't get in the States and all that. But, uh, you know, just looking at like it from that standpoint, it kind of begs the question of, you know, there's a, there's something to be, uh, you know, it, there's something to look at. Cause we know what the gaming scene is here in the United States. You know, I mean, obviously you have your Fortnite players like John, uh, you know, uh, you've got your Fortnite players, you've got your, uh, Oh, goodness. Uh, you know, your arcade gamers that are here in uh, Indianapolis. And of course, Mark, where you're up at in the region near Chicago and all that, you know, at the guy. Ga- I mean, let me ask you something. What is your what is your arcade place? Like, what is your arcade home? If you had to say if you have to say uh, if it was anything like would, mine's mine's tappers, hands down. Yeah, I would consider I would consider Galvin Ghost mine because it's an so, hour and a half away. Yeah, so. Chicago. Okay, so in yeah. Chicago. Yeah, and you want to know something for me to getting down? Well, I mean, granted, we can't. Nobody can go anywhere right now, but uh, you know, because of the fact that I actually moved further north, uh, uh, I now live in uh, 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 Hamilton County, just north of uh, Indianapolis. Don't want to say specifically where and all that stuff. I mean, I I'd tell you and all that stuff, but uh, nah, just kind of a privacy freak a little bit. But the thing is, though, is that. Uh, you know, like that's my arcade home. And then you got all these different kind of gamers. Now you want to know something, John, you brought this up. I'm two type of gamers, or I should say, you know, there are two genres that I absolutely love and that you really can't compete at mudding and point and click adventure games. And guess Mm -hmm. what country is known for point and click adventure games, Germany, for whatever reason, I've heard this. And in fact, actually, uh, the, uh, Dude, uh, Tim Schaefer of, I think, Double Fine Studios, who formerly was, uh, uh, you know, worked uh, with the, uh, I think it was a Ron Gilbert of uh, Maniac Mansion fame and Monkey Island, Secret of Monkey Island and all those games. You know what I mean? The point and click adventure games like mm-hmm. Monkey Island, uh, Loom, um, Grim Fandango was probably Tim Schaefer's. That's a masterpiece. Any of you guys that are watching right now. If you want a masterpiece when it comes to a uh, adventure game, Grim Fandango, go get it on Steam, go get it on GOG.com. You can even run the dang thing on Linux. Masterpiece, Mark. I think it's like five, six bucks or whatever. It is a masterpiece. You know, uh, artwork from the uh, late '90s and all that, and just it's a uh, 3D. Actually, it's a 3D adventure game. So, Retro Joe, he knows what I'm talking about. Loves Grim. So, uh, in Oh, speaking of Retro Joe, going back to something you had just brought up, um, he was telling me a lot about uh, some of these systems that um, he, he was using when he was younger, and uh, I found it very interesting. I don't want to get into it too much right now, because I think that'd be great for him to talk about uh, if he comes I, on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. Re- Retro Joe, yes or no question. Did you have a Sinclair running a... Uh, I think it would have been a uh, Zilog Z80. Just yes or no. Because if that's the case, I can't wait to have you on. I really can't. <laughs> I think it takes a little bit of a delay there. I think it's like eight seconds and all that. Or so, he's going to say, here's the second answer. He's going to say, ah, I'm going to mess with Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it too. So anyways, uh, yeah, he might this, be falling asleep. That's <laughs> possible. 
Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, Retro Joe. So, yeah, I heard that, that like, the Sinclair and all that. So, basically, my understanding, or, or this is my impression of the Sinclair computer, basically, in the 80s, my understanding was the Sinclair computer was to the United Kingdom what the Commodore 64 was in the United States back I've, in the 80s. Okay, now, you know what, now you mentioned that, I've heard of the Sinclair. I've heard that, I'm, weren't they, like, trying to, like... I've heard that before because um, and, and something on Facebook where Andy said that he got there's a, some kind of Sinclair where you can um, I think I know what you're talking about. Isn't it like a little computer? Yeah, right? it, it hooks up yeah. to a TV. It was basically my yeah. understand or at least my impression of that computer was uh, the Specky. Okay, the yeah. spec. I think so. there's a company that Andy mentioned that I th- that mentioned online that, that I think they're, re- they're remaking it or there's a new Sullivan online or something like that where they can play all these games. I thought that was kind of cool. I've seen, I, so I, you just said that. And I just, re- I just remembered seeing that it's like a little machine. It is. It is a little machine. Yeah. And, and actually, yeah. so this is the internet. So here's come full circle as far as how I know about this. Cause I'm into like retro tech and all that. And specifically like, uh, as you can hear here with my, uh, with my synthesizer that I have in front of me and all that, uh, I'm into like uh, retro gear when it comes to like music and also into like uh, computers and all that. So Mark, the Sinclair was a uh, affordable computer, uh, early eighties. I think it was the Sinclair ZX or something like that, or ZX if you're American and whatnot, but I'm pronouncing it uh, ZX and all that. Cause it's all, all the uh, uh, people pronounce it and retro Joe, please correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I'm not, I'm by no means an expert on this at all. But uh, this particular computer, the one that I'm thinking of, it was basically the Commodore 64 for the the United Kingdom. It was very, very, very popular. Basically kind of like an all-in-one type computer box with like a keyboard, except this keyboard was not like a clicky keyboard. It was actually, it had like a membrane, like a mesh membrane or something like that, Mm -hmm. that people would type into and all that. So uh, because of that, it was not really good as far as like, uh, I heard that, you know, not as responsive as like a clicky mechanical keyboard. So, uh, but the thing is though, is that it kind of led the way for personal computing in the United Kingdom, and there were a lot of games that were actually made for that system. Uh, God, I need to watch a video about that, man, because, like, you know, a lot of those systems, like the Apple II and the Commodore 64, I'm, I wonder what operating system the Sinclair ran. Was it some form of basic? Because I do know that there, the reason why there was a lot of portability or whatever between, like, the Apple II and the Commodore 64 was because of the fact that, well, if you're running the same operating system and you got the source code, you really don't have to do that much. I mean, it's the same way with me being able to go and get like source code off GitHub, compiling it. Uh, say, for example, like Wolf Mame, uh, you know, Wolf Mame will run on Windows. It will run on Microsoft Windows. It'll run on Apple Mac OS if you compile it from source, which actually, I don't know. That's a good question. I've never heard of anybody so, ever. That's one thing. So I how- how would the Spectrum compare to it, like a TI-99? You had the ZX-8, hold on one second. You had the ZX-80, then they followed up with the ZX-81. Okay, that's what it was. The the Sinclair ZX-80 and then the ZX-81. How would, now John, what was your question again? How would the TI-99? Yeah, how would how would they compare? That I don't know. If I if, I, if you're talking about the Texas Instrument computer, I think yeah. my, dad, my father actually has one of those in his barn. Didn't it take cartridges? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, I briefly, I briefly remember that. Yeah, I, I remember. I wanted to take. I'll never forget that. My parents are divorced, and like, uh, I remember putting that thing up in the barn. My dad's barn, but I really wanted it because I wanted a computer to mess around with before I actually got a computer uh, and all that. But I, t- quite honestly, John, I don't know. Um, yeah. The only thing I could tell you, I, like, I don't even know the specs, the TI-99, because I know what you're talking about, because I, I think my father has one. I don't know if one was more powerful than the other. And quite honestly, you know, when you look at, like, what the Commodore 64 had, Mark corrected me if I'm wrong. Now, I know for a fact the Zilog, the, the ZX-80, for, or the Sinclair ZX-80, I know for a fact it was running a Zilog. Like, it, it, it could be running a Zilog Z80 chip uh, that is the same chip that's used to power Galaga. 
You know what I mean? Like no joke. The, the Z, the Z, the Z eight. So the Galaga board has three Z eight yeah. on it. So Correct. It'd be the Z eighty. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, is this is that I mean, you got like that. That's not I don't think that's x86 or at least I, I really don't think it is. I think the Commodore 64 had its own, even though it had a, a CPU, it had its own instruction set. The your IBM PC compatible, obviously, that was x86. Mm -hmm, the right. Apples were the Motorola. What were they back in the day? I don't Night, know, Motorola something. <laughs> yeah, Mot but it was not the yeah. x86 instruction set, not at all. Uh, but it was whatever instruction set that came with Motorola. But yeah, no, I, as far as John, to answer your question, I don't know because it kind of depends on what type of chip was running, uh, how fast was it running, what was the instruction set, was the instruction set something that, I mean, because like an instruction set can actually hinder a chip. I mean, that's the big deal right now with uh, uh, x86 because and granted, not that I'm a not that I'm dissing anybody who runs an x86 processor. I mean, clearly, I'm running one right now, uh, you know, with my uh, dual Intel Xeon uh, configuration. But uh, sorry, I'm going on a big te tech rant here. But uh, to answer your question, John, it, it depends. How fast is the chip running? Is yeah. the instruction set going to bog down the chip? Because like that's the big complaint right now with anything Intel and AMD is that the instruction set is still continuing to run operations from the 1970s, which are no longer irrelevant. Right. That's right. why now you have no this other technology that probably you'll see it in the next five to seven years called risk five, which is an open CPU uh, with a, a reduced instruction set that gets rid of a lot of that garbage. Cause you just don't need it. You know what I mean? Granted, and those chips actually exist now. It's just the thing is, is that I think the it's experimental, and I think the best that they can do right now is run Quake Two. So, we had a, yeah, we had a couple more comments there as well. Um, Jason and Retro Joe again. Um, Jason had an Atari Eight Hundred with hundreds of games on floppy. Now that's cool. That's that is cool. Stuff I like. That is cool. We also had Amstrad. I heard about the Amstrad computers here too, and I've got a CPC four sixty four. Okay. So retro draw, I'm not too familiar with the uh, Amstrad computers and all that, but I'm all in, I'm all about like retro tech. John, actually, uh, you had an Amiga computer, didn't you? Yep. Jeez. Amiga was cool. So back in the day, my, my great aunt, she lived in, um, in, in the San Diego area and did a lot of programming for like Amiga, like, like, like video design back in like, I think it was like late '80s is when that was really popular, and she so she did a lot of work with the Amiga computers. So, yeah, no good stuff. Richard Joe, I also had the I also have an Amstrad laptop that runs on double D batteries. <laughs> there you Interesting. Go. Now that is cool. That's yeah, I like to see that. Yeah, I would love yeah. to see that too. Yeah. So well, heck, we should just get Retro Joe on and have show and tell. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all, yeah. I'm all about knowing about like what kind of rare gear and all that. I mean, if I had it my way, if my wife uh, wasn't – no, my wife is a good wife and all that stuff. I love her to death, and she loves Careful. me. Careful. <laughs> Careful. As she sneaks downstairs. <laughs> well, the thing is, is this, is that I, this is the big point of difference here. Like, I've got this freaking massive Roland Juno DS synthesizer, 88 keys, and the thing is, I feel like I need also a, a Roland System 8 synthesizer, brand new, so that I can build more sounds. And also, I need a, a Yamaha DX7 from 1983. I need that. And then also, I need a Roland D50 synthesizer from 1987. And I could keep going on and on and on and on about yeah. all these like instruments that I need, but my wife won't let me have them. And I'm like looking at like the prices like a... DX7, uh, heck, if you get one broken and whatnot, because from what I understand, most people, they say that it's broken, but all it needs is like a change on the battery. Uh, you can get one. I've seen people get them for as low as 150 bucks, and we're talking about the same synthesizer that made every other top 10 hit uh, in the 80s and all that. But no, my point in saying that is that I just love, I love retro gear. I really, 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 really Oh, do. sure. Yeah, yeah, it's good we stuff. We need to write like, some songs. That's what we need to do. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Oop. Yeah, so 
Oh, goodness gracious. So Retro, Go, Retro Joe goes nice and all that. But anyways, I wish I could have all that stuff. But, you know, Mark, you got to, I'll tell you, you're set up with your Mappy. That, let's get on that, man, Mappy. Because I know you were playing that hardcore and all that. Yeah. I and then that. Wizard of War, that kind of dropped off. I, I think Wizard of War kind of dropped play. off. And I, so... I, so I actually had all, I had all, I had all, the, I had all the machines on. Uh, I had all three of them on a few weeks ago. I had all the kids in here playing. So I don't, I don't turn them on very often, but um, yeah, I, I, for some, so I have a story about each, I can, I can share a little bit about the machines that I have. So the Mappy machine, uh, I picked up from a coworker mm-hmm. for like, I think it was, I think I picked it up for $150. He basically said, make me an offer. It doesn't turn on. It doesn't, it doesn't, nothing happens when you turn it on. So took it home, took it to my father-in-law's pole barn. And, uh, First thing I always do when you fix these things is you check the voltage. You check the voltage. Make sure the make sure it's getting five volts from the board. Make make sure it's you know you're getting five volts. You're getting anything, and uh, the thing was dead. I mean it was just deader than the doornail. So I put a put a brand new power supply in. Took took like a, a week for it to come in. Put it in, turn it on, and I had Mappy, and uh, it works great. Um, I remember seeing that game at my local bowling alley when I was a kid. So to actually own one to have it in my house is pretty neat. Uh, and so that's the, that's the one game I, I really, and it's in really good shape. It's in really good condition. It still takes quarters by the way, which is really kind of cool. Uh, the wizard of war was more of a labor of love project. So I got, the yeah, wizard I remember, yeah, I remember you had a lot of problems with that game. Holy I know. cow. So let's, so let's talk about that. So the wizard of war got, I got it for free from, they, they, they wanted to do like, you can have it. They're just going to give it to you. It doesn't, it doesn't turn on. You turn it on, nothing happens. So I took it home, and first thing, again, again, you look at the power, like what does the power situation look like? So it had the original power supply in it, and it had this giant, on the, on the power supply, it had its own dedicated power supply. It had a blown capacitor on it, you could clearly see. I mean, it was, I was like, oh, that's, that's a no-brainer right there. It's, we're going to start with the power. So I ended up, again, I uh, went to Mike's Arcade, arcadeshop.com, Found found the power supply for it, put it in, turn it on, and the game came on. Great, but everything on the on the screen was garbled, and I didn't hear the voice of the wizard. The wizard's voice was missing. I'm like, oh geez. So I ended up uh, talking to uh, Jeremy Fox. Actually, I messaged him in um, out of Prince Arcades, and uh, he told me, you know, have you tried taking out take out the game take out the, the, the so this game is unique because it has five cards. So normally, like Galaga has two boards. Yeah. This thing has five boards. It was it, it was there was a set of games that Midway did: Wizard of War, Gorf, and I think there's two other uh, two other games that Midway did. They had this system of like five five boards, and they got away from that real quick. Um, so anyway, I t- he said, "Why don't you take the boards out and on the gold connectors, take an eraser, just shine, make them nice and shiny with a pencil eraser." So. <laughs> I took the board. I took the boards out, grabbed up, grabbed the pencil eraser, shined it up really nice, and they were nice and golden. Put them in the machine, and it worked. Everything worked great, except still, the, everything on the screen looked great. I could hear some of the sound, but the wizard's voice was missing still. So I ended up, I'm like, okay. So now I'm like, okay. Do I have a sound issue somewhere? Did one of these sound boards messed up? So I thought, let's think basic. So I looked at the speakers, and one of the speakers. What's I don't know why they had done it, but the, one of the speakers was cut. So I'm like, oh geez. So I so I went and grabbed some wire nuts, uh, fixed the speaker wire, and then lo and behold, I had it up and running. So yep. that took me probably about a month, uh, a month to fix. But um, yeah, I, I love having this machine. That all three of them. It's really I I don't have enough room for another machine. I would love to, the next machine. I would love to have is either a Cubert or a Donkey Kong. Now, Cubert, I, I, I've been told that Cubert I'm gonna say, a, Just to make it easier on you, I'm going to make up your mind for you. Because I've been getting into it a little bit, been playing it on my off time. Uh-oh. Donkey I think I know Kong. what it is. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong? I yeah. want to No, Kong. I, if you were going to think say Defender, I'm going to dry <laughs> up the line. <laughs> I was going to say Street Fighter. I was going to say Street Fighter. I know you're a big Street Fighter fan. Oh, I love Street Fighter. Yeah, but if yeah, you're going to yeah, say Defender. I was going to Stargate. No. Uh, I would like a Cubert. <laughs> Stargate. So I would like either a Cubert or a Donkey Kong. And Cubert, I, so when I was three years old, I dressed up as Cubert for Halloween one year when I was like three. And remember back in the day, Cubert had its own cartoon back in the early 80s. 
So I love Qbert, but from what I've been told, that game is a pain in the ass to fix because when they built those games, um, I can't remember who. Uh, I think it was a Bally. I can't remember who. I can't remember who did. It was a Gottlieb. Maybe it was Gottlieb, um, the company. But those boards, those games were made using pinball parts, mm-hmm. and it was very, very difficult to fix. And even the ones you find today, you are usually emulated um, because you're such a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I would love to have like a Donkey Kong or a Cubert in my house next. So, so I'm gonna tuned. say, so I'm gonna say this much: Joseph Piscitelli, do not be telling lies about me. I hate freaking Defender, and here's why. <laughs> That's hard. Well, here, Mark, this is just how ridiculous it is. When you have a game that comes out in 1980 or 1981 and has more buttons than a freaking Super Nintendo controller, you've got a problem there. You know, I can't stand the game defender. I can't stand the people who are good at it. They're elitist. No, thank you. I, I no. I, I think it's you know, it, it, quite honestly, like like you know, part of there's a couple of things here. Why I have not gotten like my own classic. Uh, uh, arcade machine and all that you know here's a couple reasons why is one i mean obviously i would gut it to put like raspberry pi into it but the thing is though those arcade game those arcade cabinets are they're works of art like i would never ever go and violate a a galaga one i would never ever do that never would do that with a donkey kong but with a defender oh yeah oh yeah i'm freaking ripping that thing to shreds and all that (laughs) okay so what's stargate john you keep talking you and joe and stargate (laughs) Re- Retro Draw, I do love Robotron. Do love Robotron too. That game I can just like zone out and that's like a good five, ten minute game. That's what I love. You got, but that's, you got but your that's computer so- right in front of you, Rob? Yes. Why, why don't you go to um, Google and hit images and pop up Stargate? <laughs> like Stargate Arcade? Yeah. Is this like safe for work? Yeah, the, the, it's, it's just stuff funny. Stuff. Is it gonna be an SFW? <laughs> I'm just curious what I'll say when I he sees it. I kind of don't want to. <laughs> it's hilarious in a way. Oh. I mean, for us, it's hilarious, but he'll <laughs> he'll be like those mother. <laughs> Stargate Arcade, because I like the movie Stargate. I mean, it's a great movie. Oh, you got to look at it. You got to see what Stargate is. Did because LK... this is so funny? I thought you knew what it was. No, because like oh. Uh, is it like something that LJN got a hold of and like bastardized like they normally oh, do? God, no, 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 no. It doesn't relate to the movie at all. It's it's a video game. It's from it's it's an old video game. It's it's a retro. It's 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 along the same lines of all the God, other. God, I don't ones. know if I want to do. I feel like I feel like I'm. I feel like you're leading me to. You're you're like I'm following you. It's a it's a it's a really good joke. That's I'm all. following you into a minefield. And you're telling no, me no, just... no. It's just a really good joke. If you didn't know what it was, it's even better. All right, go to web page. Oh, he wants you to put it on the screen. <laughs> oh no. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Okay, Stargate got arcade it. game. <laughs> you're gonna love this. It's. It looks like F and Defender. <laughs> it, yeah, it's because it is Defender. <laughs> That's why we kept saying you'd like Stargate. <laughs> oh, no, that's horrible. Been... Why, father and son try to break the record? Of... That's like the most horrible thing that a father can do with his son. I mean, that's I mean not the most horrible, but I mean, I'm talking like it's. I mean. As far as like things that are not crime related, it's horrible. It's absolutely <laughs> awful. But see the whole. So back to your point, like talking about Stargate and you know and Defender and all this. Like yeah, I remember too. Like having all these buttons and things. These games were made to like go into a bar, go into like a bowling alley, go to a pizza place, take your money. So the more buttons they they threw at you, the more money they could take out of you because you sit there and try to figure it out. You know, with all the buttons and stuff. So. The more the more complicated it was, the more money the the uh, shorter the game. Made. Yeah, the shorter <laughs> the game, the more money they made. And you know that's the thing though is this is it's why like I I think about it and all that like because like yeah you're talking about your guys that can play a long time I mean like Burger Time like you've seen what I can do with that on one yeah. credit I can play over two hours and all that uh, I'm still trying to crack five million the closest I've gotten is four point nine eight and that 
that's because of the fact that I screwed up. But like that's two and a half hours. It's 20, you know, you're talking about a quarter being made, you know, after two and a half hours, it's horrible. And then oh. God, you look at like what we can do on Galaga and all that. I mean, hell I've got the, uh, uh, I mean, Mark, you've gotten over 6 million on marathon and all. Yeah. And then look yeah. what you can do with a single ship. Single ship obviously is going to be, how long did that game take you by the way? Just out of curiosity. Uh, you know? So, so 1.5 million is uh, on single think, ship. A little bit, a little, cause the, the game is a little bit different. Slower. It's going to be longer. Yeah. going to be longer. So I think that was around 55 minutes or a little bit over an hour. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's the thing though, is this like, you think about that, uh, your good Galaga players will get a million points on rank D in 42 to 43 minutes. Your good, your good ones, you know, 45 yeah. minutes, you should be able to, you should be past a million. Like I will, I would, I would say that I, you know, back whenever you and I met first met, you know, 45 minutes, I mean, 45 minutes and all that. But the thing yeah, is, is you get fair. better. Yeah. 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 45 minutes. If it takes you longer then you're doing something wrong or you're screwing around or you're missing a lot and all that. But uh, yeah, forty Joe Pichatelli, forty five average. I say for me, like it's forty two to forty three because of the fact that we've gotten more accurate. Uh, we've all have. Mark, you have, I have, and all that. But like, uh, I haven't. You're in the high eighties, John. <laughs> yeah, but it never changes. So, oh, Retro Joe has asked this a couple times, and we kind of passed over it. Um, Sorry. Have, do you know the answer to that question? Have you tried? Have you played with that? Rob, that's uh, more Did your. Did you ever realm. try a CoinOps Xbox? It's an original Xbox with MAME on it, and you can use a controller to play. If it's a four-player arcade game, they also work. No, I have not. That's very, very interesting. So interesting. So Retro Joe, are you talking about somebody who's like modded an Xbox to like run, uh, run MAME on? I mean, run MAME on it. Is that what you're saying? Because that makes perfect sense. Because I mean, you know, now our game systems are basically computers. So that's that's what I'm thinking that it is. But no, I've never never done that at all. I've always played MAME on a PC. Cool. The, have you either played it on Linux or can't remember if I've ever done it on Mac OS, but I don't use Mac anymore. Yeah, I had one. Okay, Retro Joe. I, yeah, I had one with hundreds of arcade classics. Very, very cool. No, I, I've never done it with an Xbox. Right now, as far as my gaming solution goes, portable, or I should say, well, not necessarily portable, but as far as console goes, I'm just using a straight up Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi four, four gigabytes uh, with uh, retro station on. And actually, uh, this is prior to the Raspberry Pi I'm using. It's actually prior to the official uh, retro Pi image being released. I actually had to download a uh, Raspbian and compile uh, or get the source code from GitHub, if I'm not mistaken, for RetroPie or Emulation Station and actually compile it because of the fact that I wanted the latest, I wanted to use the latest RetroPie to be able to play things. And it's absolutely awesome. Uh, all It's getting there as far as Nintendo 64. For everything else under that, perfect as far as emulation goes. Oops. So. So they were requesting some singing. Um, and they wanted to hear Mark sing, actually. Mark does look good on camera, by the way. I do want <laughs> yeah. to say that. Yeah, Thank Joe Pichatelli said that. So okay. So. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we could close out with some singing because it's been an hour and a half and all that, and I do have to wake up early and get to bed and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> all right. Mark. I'm not singing. <laughs> 
I ain't wasting no more time. talking to you and mark me um <laughs> linux river rat which i don't post anything too much anymore because well, i'm all the time I'm at, I'm at singing oh. oh singing oh god no you won't find me singing oh well okay so i do of course <laughs> that'd probably sound better than what i would sound like on this but i don't know if that is that something we dare want to pop I some, up i still got something on my phone of john of you singing well, there's some stuff on YouTube that's a little better quality. Um, I would say the best two are a couple Alice Cooper tunes, but um, yeah, I don't know if it'd be. No, we we'll close it with that. We want to leave people le want more and all that stuff. So there you go, everybody. <laughs> join us next Wednesday, Mark. Thank you for being and joining with us. Congratulations again. Congratulations. Hold on, we got to do it again. Hold on, got to do got it again. We right. got to do it again because we have to do the synth, but we have to do it the synth way. You know, we can't right. just, yeah. So. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. It was a pleasure talking to you guys for a little bit tonight. Yeah, thanks for coming on, and thanks everybody thank for you. watching. Yeah. And anybody so, that hasn't yet, please drop a follow. We could use it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You, oh, YouTube title um, for for this podcast is the gaming feats experience yeah right rob yes that is correct we do have everything is simulcasted to uh youtube so go and find us gaming feats experience we have our own youtube channel uh i believe that... oh you have the screen oh yeah i have the screen yeah hold on a second here let's do that let's see here oh it's okay I need a better solution as far as having my synth up here and all that. Oh, that's a good one, Pokey. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you guys want to see messed up music, Pokey Lafarge. <laughs> it's Pokey great. Lafarge. Pokey Lafarge. Pokey Lafarge, okay. Oh, no, no, it, it's bizarre, man. The guy's from uh, south of Chicago, actually. I think it was like from Bloomingdale or Bloomington, Illinois or something like that. Not Indiana, but uh, uh, he's like kind of like old. It's like music that you would have probably heard like during like Prohibition slash uh, the Great Depression and all that stuff. It's bizarre, you know. So hold on one second. Okay. What did you say it's called? P-O-K, like Pokey, like Gumby's friend yeah. Pokey. Yeah. Lafarge. L A F A R G E. So. Pokey Lafarge. Yeah. Okay. Gaming feats. There we are. So, as you can see right here, the Gaming Feats Experience. If you just type that in, the Gaming Feats Experience. Granted, uh, basically what our uh, uh, site serves as is nothing more than like just a, a repository for anything that we simulcast and all that. So, just keep that in mind and all. Uh, yeah, we would like to do like more, uh, uh, do some other things and all that stuff too. But, uh, you know, like as far as like adding like content, but right now with my work schedule being what it is, uh, me being in healthcare and all that, and granted I'm behind the scenes and all that, but anyways, so that's the deal with that. Anyways, uh, everybody, thank you for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. <laughs> Did you see what Joe said? <laughs> no, hold on. Uh... No, I did not want to look at no freaking Stargate again. Oh, God. Uh, Busted. Absolutely. Busted. Mark, Mark, John, thank you and all that stuff for another great show and all that stuff. And thank everybody for joining us and all that. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful evening, y'all. Hey, stay Night, safe. To, stay safe during these times, too. All right? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>